Oh. Rando is no best. Exactly. All right. What embargo. What embargo. We are live. And for today's What Embargo, we are returning to Thunderdome. Two cigars enter. One cigar leaves, man. One cigar leaves. One cigar leaves. And today's treats are the H. Upman Connoisseur number one and the Connie A. Have you ever noticed that they spell Connoisseur number one differently than they do spell Connoisseur A? No. They have it really? spelled differently on the box and the actual band of the Connoisseur as well. You know, speaking of which, I don't even know how to spell connoisseur. <laughs> well, there's multiple ways, or they just <laughs> had it wrong one time, and they've decided to keep it that way for the rest of their life. Yeah. Ah, um, oh, freaking Rob. He's asking me about beer. Anyways. Uh, beer. Yeah. Is so that Rob as in Rob Cigar Federation, Rob? Rob Cigar Federation, Rob, the one and only. Speaking of which, he also lives like half an hour away from me, as is you Aaron. Gotta, you gotta send me some. You gotta send me a Pliny or some Pliny. You like IPAs? Yeah, send me. I'd love, dude. I'm. Oh. I, it's been forever, man. I'd love to smoke one. I mean, drink one. <laughs> it's a beer, dude. What the fuck? I'm gonna smoke that beer. I'm gonna smoke it good. Yeah. Anyway, I got you, dude. I, yeah, I got you. So you're not smoking an H. Chapman or anything Cuban. You're smoking no. a uh, Illusion Pacto. Shout out to uh, Abe smoking and Dion right there. Um, yeah, this, uh, as some of you probably might know that it's sacrilegious for me to do this, but like we said in the show countless times, Dion knows flavor. He does. He's flavor flavor. He knows what's yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you did your homework. I did my homework. And we're talking – the H. Upman brand, the connoisseurs for what embargo Thunderdome. Last time we did the Thunderdome, we did a the punch, Grun Robusto. Yep. For Spain. And then we did a punch like Portugal. For Portugal, yeah. which was yeah. a, like a little Robusto. Yeah, I forget what that I, I can't I can't pronounce it. It's like this sort of bora blah blah blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. there you go. Either yeah. way. The Punch Grand Robusta won for Spain. But today by we're looking at by a landslide. Yeah. Today, I have a feeling this is going to be a bigger debate. I don't know about you, but I've seen some commentary. I've gotten some commentary about which one's oh, going to yeah. win. So we're looking at the, the Connoisseur number one, and I'm just going to read these specs really quick. Okay. Uh, it is a pre 1960s release. There was no bands on them before 2005. I'm reading Cuban Cigar website. And it is a 5 by 48 Corona Extra. It's a good yep. size. Great yep. size. Now we have the Connoisseur A, spelled differently. Wait, wait a minute. Where's that? I don't know. Either way, which is a 2013 release, which is a Genio size, which is a Robusto Extra. Five and a half by fifty-two, and that's the same size as one of the Cohiba Maduros. Yep. And which that comes in balls. one. Which which the Cohiba Maduro sucked balls. Both of them twenty-five count cabs. Yep. SLBs, <laughs> um, fly lip boxes. Yep. And now, the Connie One is a very praised stick by the HM fans. Would you agree? I uh, completely agree. Um, I think that it's. I think that the Connie one is often referred to as the. Um, it, it, to a new Cuban cigar smoker, oftentimes they put a Connie one as something that they should put in their rotation. Hello. Seth. You broke up there, mate. Big time. Yeah, you broke up big time. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me right now? Hello? Here you go. You're go back. You're talking about the Seth. You there? I'm not getting Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to. I'm going to change spots okay oh, that works it's good 
a little trog Kermit. So he's going to join us. But either way, we're going to be talking about the connoisseurs, number one, and the connoisseur A. I'm not going to tell June what I like, connoisseur number one. But I think this is going to be a hell of a battle when he, he gets his ass back on this call because I know he's a big Connie A fan. But um, while we're waiting, I want to go over a couple things on I Havana's because these are uh, for all the people out there who are uh, the February specials. Juan Lopez, Celestia number two. Box for 160. It's a good deal. Don't buy the Cohiba Maduros. Don't buy the Partagas. If you're feeding, punch double Corona up for 30 bucks. Commitment, but if those are high quality double Coronas, I'm telling you, it's summertime. You're going to be quite happy with yourself. In other news, I'm still second behind Peyton Manning on a total random note while we wait for uh, June to get back on. There's people in the chat room who wish to say something. June, you're back. Sorry about that. No, I was I was reading some of the February specials from um, I Havana's and talking about how I'm still sticking behind Peyton Manning, no matter whether or not he puts balls in people's faces or not. <laughs> um, all right, sorry. So I, I don't know if you guys heard. Connoisseur number one. Yeah, so I thought the Connie ones is kind of like that cigar that especially it, – it's a standard, right? It's a standard lineup in which it's often talked about, uh, especially to newer guys that get into cigars, Cuban cigars. Um, and certainly I think within talking about the H. Upman marca in general, um, it's it, – it, whenever you talk about H. Upman, people always talk about in terms of what to try – People always talk about Connie ones, so it's a uh, it's it's often talked about. It's loved by many, um, especially some of those uh, 2011 boxes that's flown around at various great markets. Um, people talk about those, and they they're highly highly prized right now. So yeah, you know it's it's funny because and we'll get to the Connie A as well. But you know I go I go through the H Upman brand, and you know when everyone asks me, so what's what's that size in the brand? And you get stuff like the Magnum 46, the Half Coronas, the Number 2s, the Winston Churchills, the Connie 1s. Even the Magnum 50s, you're like, wow, they're really rocking the whole portfolio. Right. But now, yeah. about Connie 1, which I think is it's a great little – it's smaller than a Robusto. I know Catfish used to consider it a Robusto. I don't. Uh, but it's in that neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, Woodish. It's in the high grass, we should say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about Connoisseur A because that's a, a newer one mm -hmm. that you really got behind. Yeah, so Cardi A's, which you said came out starting, I think it was more like late 2013. Uh, yeah. And, and, and really, I don't think boxes even started flowing through until early 14 because um, most of the boxes, I have two boxes of it, and I remember just buying it off the bat. Um, I have pretty early... 14 boxes. Um, specifically, the one that I smoked was a March 14, um, an LUB March 14. So, uh, so Connie A's, they, it, I, I think Habano was SMA Connie's A's to support that long, you know, bigger ring gauge uh, trend, I guess. Uh, yeah. When that started going on. Um, and Connie A was certainly one of those that they decided to do. Um, it, 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 and I think also, you know, typically when people talk about Kanye's, you see a lot of guys on the forums and just blogs and whatnot talk about Kanye's in the sense of, you know, it's a very fuller, uh, spicier, um, you know, robust, uh, H. Upman. So. That's a good way of putting it. I'd, I'd agree 110% with that. I've always found them to be – I haven't smoked them as many as the Connoisseur number ones, um, but it is it is definitely a fuller offering when comparing it to the other stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to look at this because I, I can't think of the date right off the top of my head, but I want to say I'm correct that it did basically came out – it did come out – it's almost it's almost a Chapman's version of the Y. Churchill, you could say. Yeah. Yeah, you could say that. Um, 
But it's interesting because, like, when you're talking about bigger ring gauges, and specifically H. Upman, there's also um, the – what is it? The, the H. Upman uh, La Casa de Habano exclusive. Um, that came out. Um, yeah, that robust, that's a robust actually. That's a, that's a big one. Which, uh, oh my god, I can't even remember what the hell that was called for some reason. Um, Royal Robusto, that's right. Um, that's what you were working on the whole time, man? I didn't know you were thinking about the Royal Robusto. Jeez. Yeah. So, like, well, the Royal Robusto came out in 2011, and this, that's the original release boxes. But yeah. um, I know that especially within 2013 and, and 14, um, and even 15, um, there's quite a bigger production because, and, and the reason I say that is because within various forms that I'm a part of and just different websites, uh, sales sites, um, I see plenty of 13 boxes that popped out for these. So, yeah. And I'm, not a, big, I'm uh, not a big fan of the Royal Robusta. You know, the, the original release, which is very typical, in my opinion, of how Habato SE does it, is when they do that original release batch, it is always better than the subsequent year's releases. Yeah. Um, so with that said, the 2011 original releases for those is, in my opinion, no different than all the other ones that's out. So uh, in other words, the 11s are great. I smoked some 13s and 14s, and they just, they're way too young. Like, it's not even worth lighting up at all. Yeah, and it's, it was, what I find funny is I've always found the wrappers to be really dark on them. Almost yeah, very limited ask. Yeah, um, and, and it's interesting because the Connie A, and the reason I brought up the Royal Robusto is because those are a 5.3 inch by 52 ring gauge, um, and the Connie, uh, and then the Connie A's is the same ring gauge, but it's you know 0.2 inches larger. Uh, Connie's, longer. Connie's a 55. Connie A's? Yeah, it's it's bigger than the, the Royal Robusto. Is it? Then yeah, 50, 52 Cuba to 50. Cigar, uh, then Cuba Cigar website has the same thing. So it was 55. Either oh. way, it's big. Yeah, it, 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 they're, they're bigger ring gauges. So. They're bigger ring gauges. And it's it's a trend, and it's it's going on, and it'll be interesting to see. Because didn't they announce – weren't they announcing – isn't Habanos announcing the, the limiteds this year? Wasn't H. Upman one of them? Um, well, the – Magnum 56 is out, if that's what we're referring to. No, not that one. I was referring to next year because they're having their Habanos Festival this coming week or something uh, like that. Hmm. I'm better. I'm not sure. I mean, I think a <laughs> quick preview. Uh, I think like half people did like a, a supposed pre-release listing of Habanos, but um, I don't yeah. recall anything related to that. But then again, I mean, that list is not going to come out until another freaking one and a half years probably. So Yeah, they'll, they might be released. By the time the embargo is over, but um, yeah. So, anyways, we kind of talked about them. You smoked the Connie ones, I and the A's. I've smoked them both. They're both in the Thunderdome. Who do you have coming out? Well, this is a tough one, man. So, let me just talk about the smoking experience for both, and and, and uh, you know, talking about which ones, which box clothes I had. So. For the Connie A, I smoked the uh, uh, USC October 2011 box. Um, so these are the ones earlier today or earlier tonight when I was talking about um, how a lot of people are picking these up uh, and, and just raving about them. Um, and I completely understand um, the rave behind it. So uh, I thought that the Connie A, to kind of sum it all up, um, it's uh, sweet and creamy and cedary cigar um and it's i felt like it was very linear cigar meaning i didn't think that there was a lot of transitions or uh complexity that built um at all but it was delicious from first draw like it's um it had a lot of uh, cedar barnyard it had this caramel creamy sweetness that i absolutely love um and by the way i've been smoking a lot of young cuban cigars for like probably for like a week straight and then this is i'm sorry non-cuban cigars for like a week straight and then this is the first cuban cigar that i picked up after um smoking all those non-cubans and dude like there's something about how cuban soil cuban everything for tobacco is just so much more nuanced and balanced 
and full of flavors, like distinctive good flavors, if oh, you know yeah. what I mean. Uh, I and mean. The, the finish is so clean, man. Like, it almost feels like when I smoke a Cuban cigar, it doesn't even feel like I'm smoking a cigar because when you smoke a lot of, when I smoke a lot of non-Cuban cigars, I get this greediness that's associated with a lot of them. Um, yeah. especially certainly within a lot of the offerings of Mexican San Andreas that the non-Cuban market uses, um, I, I do get a greediness and, and this minerality and there's dirt behind it. Um, but with Cuban cigars, I still get that, but the finish is so clean. It's not dirty. It's not ashy. It's none of those off-putting flavors. Anyways, to get off that side tangent. Um, that's a, that's a great description of the county one, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I loved it personally. So, so to talk about uh, the other one, the Connie A, um, I smoked out of a LUB March 14 box. Um, this, I was all right. So, how do I put this to sum up the overall flavors and the overall experience? I would say that this is a very uh, powerful in the camp of strength and body. And I will also say that this was a, uh, a, a more complex cigar, uh, but still young. So for instance, um, you know, right upon first light, you get like a warm up of flavors. I got a lot of barnyard, a lot of breadiness, uh, got a bunch of hay and uh, distinctive black pepper. Um, and it was a really very nuanced start. Um, and as it built, uh, the, the black pepper kept picking up and picking up. And um, as long as, as, as well as the uh, other flavors. Um, so more black pepper, more cedar, more creamy sweetness. And, um, but it was, I actually put this cigar out probably mid last third because it got so peppery and it got a bit ashy and the youth started really showing yeah. um, and, and I actually put it out uh, basically within the uh, middle or the beginning of the last third uh, because it was just too much it was too much ash it was too much um, it was too much uh, tannins it was too much youth to it so yeah that's a it's a good way of a good way of describing that one as well it's, yeah you know I've I find that, as you said, the Connie one is is very. It's not overly complex. It has a nice core flavor profile uh, that that remains from the beginning to the end. It's very smooth. Um, it gives you what you it, it gives you what it gives you. Um, you're not going to get any curves or anything like that. Um, but it makes it really enjoyable, and I think it makes it really approachable. And in some ways, it's almost it's like a lighter H up. Man. When you smoke like that versus like a, you know, we're gonna go out here. It's you know, it's when I look at H. I mean, you know, there, there's it's it's typically it's flavor focused. It's medium body, medium strength. I think the number two is in that category. I think the forty six, the fifty, the half Corona, um, those are right there. I think the Sir Winston can be a little bit lighter um, and creamier, but also very fruity. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I think that the connoisseur number one is is lighter as well. It just doesn't get as, as, as fruitiness. It keeps more to like a lighter version of that H. Upman flavor profile. Um, and, you know, with always great construction, my box was a uh, USC Oct October 11th. Oh. oh, October 11th. Oh, never mind. I had the – wait. Um, yeah, I had the exact same cigar you did. This. You just had different months, maybe. No, uh, same. USC October 11th. No, oh, so we have the same box. Yeah. Cool. I feel cool. Yeah. Um, and then we have, in my, um, the Connoisseur kind of A's, which are from 14, they're from later 14. Um, as you say, you can tell there's youth behind it. There's a lot of potential to come. It's just not there yet. It's really young. Um, but there's, there's strength, there's body, there's that pepper. I got a little bit of like a, a fruit bread note with some... I want to say like a, a rum oakiness to it, but it's it's young, and it's it's a beast. But I think in in many years to come, 
um, it has the potential to be phenomenal, mm -hmm. um, especially with that darker wrapper. Because th there's a big difference I find with the Kanye wrappers versus a lot of the other H oven wrappers. Um, it's just it's a lot darker. It's, it's almost it's got like that darker Royal Robusto wrapper. Um, so they're they're very different in that sense, um, but I think they're they're really praised H ovens at the same time, and and I found that you know in my talkings that people really like them both. They just kind of go to one versus the other, and they're saying the Kanye's are going to be where they are hmm. down the road. But then again, yeah. we have we have cigars which are like what three four years apart, right? Which is a difference, right? Yeah, I mean. It definitely have to take into consideration of the age of these cigars um and it's not only the age of these cigars it's i mean we're talking completely different sizes right like we're talking the connie ace which are younger and also they're a bigger cigar which typically what that means is it, it takes longer for it to mature to um and to yeah. get out of that youth and to taste Absolutely. something that's better um i was also going to say within the H. Upman line. I think H. Upman line does, Habano's essay does a fantastic job overall um, representing the core classic um, uh, Fatolas. Um, because, you know, typically mm -hmm. within, you know, when I think about a Robusto, you're essentially talking about the uh, standard line of, hey, if you smoke this, uh, and a lot of blenders out there, I hear, uh, they use a Robusto as a gauge point of um, kind of like their standard baseline of how they want the cigar to taste, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I definitely get that with the Connie A because it's, it's, it's essentially, it's an absolutely delicious cigar, um, but it's a no frills, no thrill cigar. And that's exactly, in my opinion, what it should be. Does that make sense? It gets you, it gets you what it gets you. It's one right. of those, it's... Every time it's going to get you, it's going to get you something. Um, it's never going to let you down, but it's never really going to be like fantastic. You know, and I know this is stupid. You know what this made me think of when I was doing, when I was smoking these two? Huh. Super Bowl 50 Peyton Manning Cam Newton. Ah, uh, <laughs> consistent old dude orb. Is that what you're going to say? Connoisseur number one is that Peyton Manning. Not this year, but you know, it's just, it's consistent. <laughs> It's it is what it is. There's yeah. there's no thrills in the sense of you're not going to get this spectacular show. There's not going to be anything like that. Um, but you're always happy with it. You know whether it gets you three points or seven, maybe even eight. Yeah. Wow. The Cam Newton is that connoisseur A, and you know it might let you down, but at the same time, it could give you a, a hell of a ride too. It could give yeah. you an amazing touchdown. And it's a more of a youthful, powerful. <coughs> Like it's a sprint kind of a oh, exactly. thing. You know? No, I know what you're saying. Um, that's a good. That's a good analogy. Um, that's 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 the way we're gonna break it down. Now we're gonna break <laughs> it down with NFL quarterbacks. <laughs> and really, man, like I think about the entire A. Chapman line. This is kind of an off tangent between the actual Dunner Dome, but just speaking A. Chapman in general, though, I think every Fotola out there makes sense that it's there, and it makes sense that it's there, and it hits. The wide spectrum of uh, contingent upon contingent upon how much time you have and what kind of a smoking experience you want in terms of flavor, body, and strength, it's all represented. I mean, you're nothing, talking about nothing overlaps, right? And and, and that's um, and I can't say the same for probably vast majority of the markets out there. <laughs> the only other the only other brands I think that can really Actually, there's only one brand I think that can do it, um, and that's probably Ramon Iones. It yeah. just doesn't have a wider variety, but with what it does have, it's, it's offering. It's got that small club Corona, um, it's got a Robusto, and it's got a uh, double Corona. Well, you got the little LCDH in there as well, but forgetting right. that one, you just got those three, and it's you got a short, a classic, right. and then a big one. Right. Whereas a Chapman, I feel like if you want a very good, flavorful, short smoke, you know, there's the half Corona, right? Oh yeah. Um, and, and if you want something that's just linear and just tasty, you, you know what to expect. The Connie one. If you want to have a two hour, or two and a half hour smoke, and you want a cigar to build as it goes, Sir Winston, right? Yep. So, you know, it it, it has a wide breadth of spectrum, um, and, and that's fantastic. So, 
it's it's a great it's a great brand. I think there's very very different. But we got to ask the question right now. We're talking today. Thunderdome. They're both in there. Who's coming out? You know, I I uh, I didn't think going into it I was going to say this because I smoked quite a few of these Connie A's and Connie ones, but I have never smoked them back to back. Um, and I would have to say at this current point, just purely focusing on how much I enjoy this cigar, i.e. I nubbed that one and I put that A last third out of even smoke. So at this point, it's going to have to go to the one. And, and, that's, and that's surprising. It's – you know, but it shouldn't be surprising. You it, know what it, I mean? It shouldn't, but you know, it's it's one of those things because if you smoke a really good A right now, you're like, oh man, right? But but that connoisseur one, it just keeps bringing it back. It just keeps delivering what it's delivering, and the connoisseur A is not doing it. Yeah. And 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 I looked at it as all right, right now, I'm giving it to the Connie one. Um, in the years to come, connoisseur A. Yeah. You know, if we come if we come back in a couple of years and did this, Connoisseur A would, would win in a heart. Now, right now, if, if you want to even get more in depth, you're talking Thunder, you're talking about a little short battle, Connoisseur A. But if it's going to be a little long, endurance, going to have to take it, but keep delivering what it is, Connie will. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what would be interesting is if we would attract some – if we would attract some Connie ones down that are within – you know, 14s. Um, yeah, recent production, see where they are. Right. Uh, and, and I didn't think of that. I mean, I think if you want to be scientific about this, um, I think that would have made more sense to do. Day, um, day to day. Right. So, uh, and, and that goes with any, you know, I, that's tough, man. Like, and that goes, in my opinion, within any. Uh, I think that goes along with anything. Anything, uh, really. I mean, if you, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty of it, like I think you should do that. But, uh, but what we brought, in my opinion, to the audience was the fact that both of what we had are still readily available out there. And at the end of the day, you want to buy cigars that taste good now, right? I mean, is yeah, it the point of the smoking cigars to smoking now to the extent that it's possible? That's good now. Enjoy them. So, it's. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know. I like I'm aging H up in number twos. I don't think I'd ever age. Well, I shouldn't say I don't think I'd ever age. I would never buy connoisseur number ones with the intention of aging them. If with like a box like this, I just smoke it. I to me, there's no point. I'm like, listen, these 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 elevens are smoking great. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. That's my that's my theory. But you're a bigger collector than I am. I mean, for me, uh, I rather have the perspective of so, like, you know, I try to tell myself and go from the mindset of I always want a good smoking stock. So, what does that mean for me? Um, so, let's just take Connie ones for instance. Um, and, and I know that I personally really enjoy Connie ones, and I always want to have enough in stock for me to smoke. Uh, on a fairly regular basis, right? So I would buy one essentially once a year. I will buy a box so that within as the years progress, I will always have a good current smoking box and then let the young ones age and, and just, you know, stuff them and, and, and forget about it. So I see, I see exactly. I see what you're saying. You are very, you are the domesticated human being. You, you, you have the farm animals and <laughs> you got the farm, you got the, you're, you're rock and rolling. I'm the hunter, man. I'm out there in the woods. I got to find it. <laughs> what is it? I don't know, but I'm going to smoke it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I say that, but the reality of it is, is my collector mindset gets the better of me and I would just forget about the damn thing. And then I'll find it sometime. I do, I, I do a yearly spring. Yearly checkup. Yearly yeah. checkup. And when that happens, I'm like, ah. Oh. First of all, I say, "Well, shit, I have way too many freaking cigars to smoke." But uh -oh. and then I think, well, this is awesome because it puts a smile on my face. And yes, I am a collector, 
and this is fun. So, you know, you don't like it, that's, you know, whatever. Teach your own, right? I teach your own. Now, these 11s, how many more years do you think they got? Oh. So, I actually have some Connie ones that are 2008s. Yeah. And um, I was actually going to smoke it today, but um, uh, didn't get a chance to. But they still are incredibly tasty. It, it's the same flavor profile, actually. It's, it's very sweet, creamy, and cedary, and it's very linear. It's very, very incredibly similar to the 11 that I smoked yesterday. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so it's very a little bit off, more well-rounded. Like, a little bit more balanced, a little bit more rounded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely more balanced. Um, uh, definitely – uh, less of a nicotine kick. Not that the Elevens had much of a nicotine kick for me. Yeah. Um, but they're still delicious. I mean, so I'm going to have to say that the Elevens are ready to smoke and smoke boxes of right now and get right now to smoke. Uh, at the same rate, it has an easy another three, four years, man. Minimum. I was gonna. I was gonna say. I was gonna say at least three years. Yeah. I was gonna say I could. I could probably come back to these in what, 2020, and they'd still be smoking great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's. It's and the H Hutton brand is. It's it's one of those brands, and you know, Catfish and I talked about this, and I I think it's a brand that listen does it do better with H E S, but I think you can smoke them younger. I think H Hutton you can smoke them younger, and you, you can still find a lot of enjoyment. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think if if I were to speak of a Trumpman as a market in general, I would say have no hesitations on picking up pretty much any box of a Trumpmans out there because if it's not ready to smoke now, and which a lot of them are, um, like half Kronas, Connie ones, even Connie Ace to some extent, right? If you get some good ones right now, right oh, now. Yeah. But I don't know if you want to take that kind of gamble because, I mean. If you're looking at price tag, we're taking we're talking completely different price tags for Connie Ones and Connie A's, right? Um, yeah, Connie Ones are very affordable, incredibly affordable. I, I'm, I think you see some at like 155 bucks a box. Um, yes, yeah, and then a, a Connie one. A's are like I think they're near like 350 to 380 range per box for yeah. you, know, or, you know both box of uh, 25s for each. So you it's know, that fancy band, band. so fancy yeah, it's, band. It's, it's that thicker band. Um, speaking of which, uh, talking about thick I, bands. Yeah, so like, yeah, the double bands and the thicker bands and all that. It is so absolutely stupid and retarded. I mean, when I think about Cuba, when I think about Habano's essay, I think about <laughs> classic. I, I I think about don't fuck with tradition. You know, I, that's I'm, exactly what's going on. They're trying to do this like hip, you know, trendy. Modernization, contemporary, whatever BS. Like, don't do it. All right. So, are you opposed to the Magnum Forty Six and Magnum Fifty bands? Yes. I'm too. It's I mean, unnecessary. It's completely unnecessary. It's um, and, and yeah, I mean, some of it. The argument, for instance, Cohiba. They created the new bands um, as a way that, to that deserves it. That deserves it. No, it, it doesn't. Wait, why does it deserve? What? The, the new Co because I think I think Cohiba needs a better, a fancier band. No, I think the original, I think the bands that were there for the longest time until they changed it in two thousand what? Uh, they 13? changed it so they changed it. They changed it so many times. Yeah, thirteen I think is when they started changing those. Like, I think they're nicer looking, no doubt. I think they're more contemporary, but the older bands has a classic feel to it, right? It's like, you know. Uh, I mean, God forbid, they're, they're going to start changing. They're no longer going to do like sly lip boxes or dress boxes and all that. They're probably going to start putting shit in like, I don't know, like acrylic humidors. Who, who the fuck knows, right? Like, Dude, yeah, they'll start selling them in, in like the uh, the fancy jars all the time. And it's just... And I don't want that. And, and you know, yes, I am a collector, but I don't want to... At the end of the day, I collect cigars so that I could enjoy the smoking experience. Not because it looks cool. It, 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 it's you know, it's the smoking. Oh, yeah. It's all about the smoking. It's, yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's about it's what my palate tastes. That that old poor Laranaga band, which like it's like the cousin made it in the garage type of a band. Ah. I love it. 
And you don't, know, like the 50 uh, count of the PL, a poor Lauren, I got petite Coronas. And when you pick up that 50 wheel, and when you take that band spin off. It around, spin it around, man. You ever done that? I did that shit all the time. Like, no, I don't do that. <laughs> um, Whichever one falls out, that's what you got to smoke. <laughs> but, like, you look at that band, and even when you take some of those petite Coronas and you try to, you know, lay them all out, and there's, there's, because of the glue, some of those petite coronas stick together, right? You kind of have to like nudge it a little bit to take it out. I like that. I like how the gold looks gritty and looks a little rustic, you know? Um, but then, I mean, the same shit, like poor Lauren, I got the, the, uh, the regional stuff. Uh, oh, man. All this just... fancy schmancy stuff. Yeah, it's just crazy. And even the, uh, the picadores. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Completely different. It's, you know, it's just, I like these H. Upman bands. I like the, uh, the, the improved, well, they're not improved, but just those bands. I like them. Um, but I do think there's a conspiracy involved around them. A conspiracy? Yes, there's a conspiracy with these bands. And this is, this goes to my Dion thing. And if you have ever looked at the bands, hmm. you notice there's two white aliens. It's the white alien dude. Whoa, 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 wait, what are you talking about? What band are you talking about? From the H. Upman bands? You never seen the white? You never seen the alien? No, man. Oh my gosh, you guys are about to get a, le a lesson here. All right, look. You see the alien? So you have to turn it. You have to turn it sign. You can you can see that you can see the alien, man. Look, it's well, right there, dude. There's the head. There's the alien. <laughs> that's the name look at it <laughs> and then it, and it goes on it goes on further man if you look inside the half circle the half wheel there you go Charlie half wheel you'll see those little five the little five celebratory things whoopty to do four facing in one in the middle yeah do you, do you know the number five the importance of the number five no dude it's the fifth element Oh, dude! You Seriously? know how many you know how many pillars there are in on the five pillars of Islam. Do you know how many how many books there are in the Torah? I see where five. you're going. Five. How many wounds did Jesus Christ have? Five. And it goes on, man. It's a conspiracy. There's yeah. something going on with the H. Upman brand. I don't know what it is, and that's why it's as successful yeah. as it is. And Very something happened that. And you notice, and it happened right when they made it a uh, a global brand, right? So there's something there. Cuba's not talking about it. Mm. I want to know. Oh, guess who else smoked H. Upman's? JFK. What happened to that guy? <laughs> oh, whatever. Now you're stretching this shit, dude. I'm stretching this out. I'm gonna take this on. But yeah, so. It's. I'm with you. They, they've they've made the bands a little too much. Um, huh. See, so now you're thinking about it. You're going to be checking out your H up and bands and looking up the number five. Oh, dude, I'm it. looking at it right now. I'm looking. I'm on Cuba Cigar website right now, and I'm looking yeah. at the, the actual band. Check it out, man. It goes. It goes everywhere. It's hmm. in mathematics, religion, and culture. Here you go. Hmm. Let me pull this up. There's five sacred Sikh symbols. It's just... Hmm. I'm telling you, you're going to find a bunch of stuff and you're going to be freaking out. So, Interesting. All right. But yeah, so either way, I'm with you. They made the bands too fancy. I, it, I, I disagree with the whole Cohiba thing. We can have a, a Thunderdome over that. I think I think the brand deserves the fancier bands. Hmm. It's a little much on some of the smaller ones, like those new bands on the sequel one. It's just like, it's I mean, monstrous. he's up, he's up, they're they're pulling a Gurkha here. It's nice. like let's let's cover the whole cigar, man. Um, but I, other than that, it's just some of those old Cohiba bands. I mean, look at them. It's just. This is your flagship brand, and this is what it's. This is what it is. I love it. I love all that, man. I I love the old regular bands and those crusty old vintage cigars. You know, the shittier looks and 
the more it smells like a freaking wood peg when you pre-light, you know, the better it is, you know, because you get all this other, you get the actual nuances and you're smoking history when you smoke something that's that vintage and, and, and what that, you know, uh, archaic look. I, I'll, I'll give you, I will give you that, that there is like, you feel like you're smoking a piece of history. Oh. I, I will, I will give you that with the coherence. It's, it's the... I, I got some of these, and I got some. Um, I think I got like a ten count box of Stego Six with the old bands. And I don't want to smoke them. I'm never going to smoke them because I want to keep them for the days when, you know, let's say the embargo whatever it is. Cohiba is going to be that brand that, that that is a brand established by Castro, basically. You know, mm -hmm. the bad guy. Right. So then you can have the brand which was part of the evil empire man whether it was really a big part of it or not. Hmm. and it's just you got that old school band you know i i say yeah i mean I, I say leave it leave the old school stuff because at the rate this is going like we're gonna have we're gonna probably use our cell phones right and we're going to have this little headphone or some jacket we're going to plug into like a fucking vape or something. And we're going to start vaping H. Upman's, H. Upman flavors. On I don't the, like on it. The, on the iPhone? That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> I'm Imagine. I'm telling you right now. It's gonna, this thing's going to turn into a vaping machine for cigars someday. You know, one of these days, the, Cuba's not going to put like the, uh, the box codes that you can scan on the boxes to make sure it's legit. They're just going to put it on the cigar so you can be like, beep. Yeah. Authentic yeah. Habanos. Yeah. So, anyway. who knows, man. Anyway. Either way, Connoisseur number one. It's the winner of Thunderdome today. Who knows? A couple years, it'll probably be the Kanye. But we're going to think of another uh, good Thunderdome. But the next time we come back, we're going to talk about the Habanos Festival. We're going to talk about what they released. What's the latest Limitadas? Showcase them off. They're going to have all those fancy bands that, uh, that June hates. Yeah. Don't fuck with tradition. Don't fuck with tradition, man. That's that's the theme for today. Don't fuck with tradition. Any other final words, man? We can end early otherwise. Uh no, I mean it's uh it's been a bit of a lull for me the, the last couple of weeks of smoking Cuban cigars. Haven't haven't touched them, man. I kept touching all these you know, and see stuff. Not that it's bad by any means. It's just different, right? I want to come back to a, a Cuban cigar, a good Cuban cigar, like the Connie. A, I mean, the Connie one that I had yesterday. It's comforting. Oh yeah, it, it, it brings you back and saying, "This is why I have cigars." This is this is why I smoke. Yeah, exactly. It's, man, that Napa Wine Company Cabernet I had. Oh. The other day. Dug it. It was phenomenal. Yeah. I don't know if you've had it before. No, I haven't. I, uh, dude, I have. I so the way I do it is like, I'm like full fledged buying cigars, or I'm full fledged buying beer, and then there's like whatever else. And, and wine is definitely one of them. I, I, I actually got into wine when I was in college, so uh, spent quite a bit of money on wine. Uh, but I'm getting back into it, man. Like, cause I. I I, I didn't drink wine for a little bit because nobody around me really I could talk to about it, right? Yeah. So, you know, what we should do. You know, what we should do this. It's the fortieth anniversary of the Judgment of Paris. Do you know what that is? No. That's when, like, uh, the Stephen Spurrier um, brought Amer California wines over to France, and they they challenged the French panel. Um, in case of oh, the lines, what's yeah, French, what's one, uh, Chateau uh, Montalena Chantel. one, Chateau yeah. Montalena and Stags Leap one in the cabs. Yep. I think we should do a show which we, we drink a, a Montalena Chardonnay. We find a, a really nice scar to go with that because that's a great Chardonnay. Um, yeah, it is. Isn't that and crazy? We, they're still going. They're, they're still going strong. So. Oh yeah, man. It's I I I have, I have a lot of vintages of it. That's like my uh, favorite nice. Chardonnay. And then. We can pick up a Stagsley. 
Um, I'm not yeah. picking up. I'm not buying a Cast 23 for like a couple hundred dollars. But yeah, we can find another cab of theirs that's more affordable. Yeah. What you need to do is you should get your ass out here because I'm like 40 minutes away from Napa. And so I was actually I was I was talking about that with my wife. I was like, we got to go out there. So yeah. I said I said. Uh, June lives out there. I was like, yeah, she's you like, guys could even like, crash here, man. You could crash at my house. You're welcome to. So, dude, dude, big tuna will crash, and you'll be like, "Oh shit, what did we get ourselves into?" No, so, no, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be like, man, if I don't we get some fucking Vikings up at this house, get some Vikings. But yeah, I was like, I was like, you know, June lives in San Francisco. We're right there. She's like, June. I was. She's like, who? I was like, June. What a Margo <laughs> co-host. She's like, oh, Yellow Snapper. I was like, Yellow Snapper. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> but yeah man and then speaking of which we could go drive down for about two and a half hours um and then we're at uh, uh we're at the coast the central coast so we could go to uh pismo beach um and and then uh the san luis obispo region a lot of great red zones coming out of there and it's affordable nice. at that point because it's yeah. not heavily marketed like freaking napa is now Oh, Napa's crazy. Well, my sister lives in San Jose, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, okay. We'll make it a whole family endeavor, man. Yeah, It would man. be legit. Come out. So, anyways. Uh, looks what like you had, you had guests at your house anyways. What's up? Looks like you had guests at your house. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? I, I get uh, I get some of the Southern California guys to come up and for her once in a while, too. So We can hang out with Loomis. And Robert yep. Raz. Yep. Yeah. Head to, head, to, head to a Giants game. Oh yeah, Giants game. Well, A's game, but you know it's it's, it's a shitty stadium at A's. <laughs> but that's right. Yeah. You guys, you guys still got Golden State Warriors rocking and rolling. Oh hell yeah, dude! We're they're killing it, dude. They're gonna looking to make history. So. Now here's my question: Do you think they're gonna win it all, or do you think they'll they'll blow it in the playoffs? I think they got it to win it again. I think they could do it. I think they could do it, and and, and, and they they meld so well together, man. Like, um, and and that's not common in any professional sports, in my opinion, because typically you get these guys that are, you know, more selfish driven than teamwork based, right? So, hey, man, they just want some really big rings. Yeah. So, anyway, man, yeah, man, we'll call it a we'll call it a show, but we're gonna come back. In a couple of weeks, and we're going to talk about the Festival de Habanos. Yep. And let's Sounds see what good. they've done to piss off Yellow Snapper. Yeah. Night, everyone. Thank you for catching our show again. And yeah, man. We appreciate you guys. Uh, so thank you. Yeah. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Later, guys. Bye-bye.